And good morning again. We're, we're going to start this morning with our CBS News correspondent covering the Sochi Olympics, Mark Phillips. Uh, Mark, what's up? Well, uh, I'm happy to report that what's up is sports. Uh, with all the run-up to this games and the talk about security and corruption and expense and, of course, the gay rights issue for the last few days since the games have actually started, uh, sports has raised its head and people are pretty relieved around here about that. The games have been running pretty smoothly. The fears of really tight security on the ground here have not materialized. As we know, the Russians have about, they say, 40,000 people involved in uh, making these games safe, but most of them, I'm happy to say, are not visible in the Olympic site. They're spread through the hinterland around the whole district of, of Sochi. Uh, if you drive up the road between this coastal cluster here, as they call it, up to, into the mountains where the skiing events are, uh, there's a long 40 or so mile road that goes up there and it is very carefully protected. Uh, soldiers in the woods, big military camps along the way as you go here. But so far the great fear of these games, of course, uh, it has been security and thus far um, nothing's happened, which is, which is good news. So what has happened is, this, is the sports. A uh, couple of good wins for uh, the U.S. team in snowboarding, this new upside down over the snow, slow uh, slope style, they call it, uh, event. Uh, two American golds in the men's and the women's is that. Bit of a disappointment in the big downhill ski race where Bodie Miller was hoped uh, the New Hampshire, long established New Hampshire skier, uh, was the fastest in the uh, practice runs. Uh, he finished eighth in the actual event. Uh, but a good smooth start to the sports of this games, which hopefully is the way it'll continue. Mark, you've been to about as many Olympics as I've been to uh, political conventions. How does this one uh, shape up? They're all different, uh, just as the conventions, probably not quite as many as you, but just as the conventions are different, so, so are these games. And you have to distinguish between the pre- and post-9-11 games. All of the post-9-11 games have been pretty tight uh, security issues, uh, fear of attack, of course. It's the case in London, not so much in Beijing, of course, uh, but all of these games uh, now have to invest heavily in security. Here there's the, the added uh, issue that this game is in the the very southern part of Russia in the North Caucasus. There are uh, groups around here in Dagestan and Ossetia um, that um, are not happy with the Russian presence uh, here, and so that, that's added an extra layer of, uh, of concern. But the games themselves, um, you know, the, the Russians have made a gigantic investment uh, both financially and politically and reputation wise in these games. The figure being thrown around is 50 billion bucks. Uh, building this site uh, out of nothing. Um, they pretty well better do well on the metal table too to make it a success for them, but there's an awful lot riding on these games for them and of course for Vladimir Putin. All right, Mark Phillips, our man at the Olympics. We always like it when Mark Phillips is our man at any big story. Mark, thanks so much. My pleasure.